What's up everyone? This is Tyson at Titans of CNC. I'm back here in the programming room with the Titan 805 opened up. I'd like to talk about the pinch turning operation and how I program that on 316 steel. So with pinch turning, we're going to run two of the same roughing tools, one on the bottom turret and one in the upper spindle, and we're going to run them at the same time, splitting the roughing passes between the two. This lets us run the program faster and it brings extra rigidity to the part because the tools are engaged at the same time. The pinch turning operation is really easy to create in Mastercam and we're really just going to take a standard lathe OD roughing pass and we're going to convert it into pinch turning. So for the OD roughing pass, the geometry that I used for the part was that I converted the solid into a wireframe. If I go to my level manager, and I disable this first level with my 3D model. It's a little bit hard to see, but I have a wireframe for all the geometry for the OD and ID of the part. I use that wireframe to chain the geometry for my OD roughing pass. So if I go to my OD roughing pass and I click on geometry, you can see where I have it selected. You can see that I've chained from the bottom of the part. That's because the main tool that I'm using for the pinch turn is going to be set up for the bottom turret. And then when I go to pinch turn, it's going to be using the upper turret and that's going to be the secondary operation for the pinch turning. So let's take a look at the numbers I have for the pinch turn main operation. Like I mentioned before, this is just the standard OD roughing pass that I created. It was changed to pinch turn main because I selected pinch turning afterwards. So this comes up first for 316 steel. I ran it at 11 thousandths per revolution. The tool I'm using is a CNMG 432, so a 31 thousandths radius tool, and we're running it with 400 SFM. You can see that I've cut the max spindle speed to 750 RPM, and that's because I didn't want this part spinning too fast because it's not holding on to a lot. I took down some of the weight by drilling the part before doing this operation, this is still a pretty heavy chunk of 316 steel. And I'm only holding on to an inch with these claw jaws. The claw jaws I know will hold it, but I need to cut the RPM down so I don't lose too much chuck pressure. 750 RPM max. And honestly, that's not too bad because with SFM, you're slower depending on what diameter you're cutting. So it's really only gonna start speeding up once it gets closer to the center diameter. So. It's really not losing too much time. For our roughing parameters, we're doing 90 thousandths depth of cut, and we're going to be leaving 5 thousandths in X and Z. Now, like I mentioned before, you make this pass with a standard roughing pass. So you want to put whatever parameters you want to use for the pinch turning operation. So when you have 90 thousandths for your depth of cut, both the bottom tool and the top tool will be using that depth of cut. Our rough direction and angle is set for the bottom of the part because that's where we chained and we're going to be working with the OD of the part. And then for lead in and lead out, I'm just using a standard 100 thousandths lead in and a standard 100 thousandths lead out. I did shorten the contour by about 2.2 inches and that's because I chained to the very end of the part and then I backed it off two inches. One important thing that I made sure was for the plunge parameters, I turned off any plunge so I don't have this tool dipping into any of the grooves on the part. And finally, I set the stock recognition to remaining stock. And other than that, it's just a regular roughing pass for steel. Now, right after I made that operation, I went up here to pinch turn, and that's where this pinch turn associated path came from. Now, for this operation, I select what tool I wanted to use in the upper turret. So in the bottom turret, we were using KM50 tools. In the top turret, I'm going to be using a PSC 63 CNMG. And then I wanted to make sure for tool angle, I had this tool oriented so that it's facing vertical and the insert is pointing towards the part. So tool angle sets up how the tool is going to be orientated for your cut. And then we go to our pinch turn parameters. And the only thing that we have to set is we have to select the OD roughing pass that we want to turn into a pinch turning operation. And when you do that, it's going to split up the roughing passes between the two tools 
and it's going to do all the work for you. The only thing you need to tell Mastercam for the pinch turn is whether you want the first cut to be done with the upper or lower turret. So I have the lower turret set as my main, so I want the lower turret to do the first cut. For the dwell at the start of the second cut, that's how long the secondary pinch turning tool has to wait before it gets started. So you have your main tool going first, and then after a certain amount of time, the second tool starts. So I have this one set so that after 500 thousandths of cut from the first tool, then the secondary tool gets to work. Well, so that's pretty much it for programming. So like I said, it's pretty easy. You're just converting a OD roughing pass into the pinch turning operation. You just need to make sure you set up your bottom and upper turrets right. But other than that, Mastercam really just takes care of the work for you. I hope you learned something today. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.